Since the launch of Style Reference feature by Midjourney, I wanted to be able to create my own custom SREF code that I could reuse. Midjourney's personalization feature somewhat fixed that problem. However, it was a long process to rank image pairs to train a personal model. Now, with recently launched Moodboard feature, you can train your own consistent style and end up with a reusable style code literally in seconds. Midjourney's AI model analyzes the patterns and common visual elements in the images within your mood board. Mood boards are like your Pinterest boards, a digital canvas where you can pin your favorite images, colors, and textures, except they carry the accumulation of aesthetics of all images in the board. Midjourney's AI model analyzes the patterns and common visual elements in the images within your mood board to create a unique style profile. This profile encapsulates the essence of your inspiration and guides the AI in generating new artwork that reflects your chosen aesthetic. For instance, if your mood board includes several images with abstract blue swirling patterns, Midjourney will identify these as key elements and generate images with similar characteristics. Additionally, this feature shortens prompt length dramatically because you can represent visual guides, color palettes, composition, texture, and the overall mood with a single code line. Let's create a mood board step by step. First, choose Personalize option from the toolbox on the left. This is the new personalization screen where you can manage all of your style profiles. Now navigate to the mood board section and click on Create mood board. You have several options for adding images to your mood board. You can upload images directly from your device, you can add links to online images, or you can select from your library of previously generated images. I'm going to directly upload images from my device. Here, I prepared a collection of photorealistic cinematic images. You can see a few examples here. You need to choose a good number of images. You can aim for around 20 images. I select all of them and start uploading. Uploading is done. Now I will give my mood board a descriptive name that will reflect the style it represents. I will call this photorealistic cinematic style. Now we can simply copy the code, the code that represents this visual style here, and run our first test. I wrote cinematic photo of a couple visiting a Christmas market. I have my style code here, and I will only add aspect ratio. Let's run this and see where this will take us. Our photorealistic cinematic image is generated. And you can see the mood board, the style we created is represented here, the photorealistic cinematic style. And I would argue that it represents nicely the style we trained. Let's try a close-up, a cinematic close-up photo of a female detective holding a gun. It managed to generate a nice close-up and that's good because in the mood board among 24 images, I picked a variety of different camera shots and you can see we had full body shots, close-ups, medium shots, and that's really good to train your model because you will need a variety of shot types and you want to ensure that everything is represented here. Okay, if we go back to mood board, you can share this style code with other users if you would like to share your style inspiration, of course. Additionally, you can set this style LoRa as a default style aesthetic for your upcoming generations. Meaning, if I remove this code from now, Style code still represented here, it's grayed out, but this means that when we type a prompt, let's try one, I don't need to write cinematic photo anymore because this style Laura we trained is actually representing that. I will just write female ballerina and just an aspect ratio, and I have my photorealistic cinematic style as a default, and I will hit enter. So if we go back to creation screen, you will see that our mood board, the style code is represented here because we set that as a default. Okay, this one is super weird, but this looks good, except hands, and again, we have some hands problem, but this looks interesting. Okay, few tips for you. Let's create a new mood board. You can start with a few key images and gradually add more to see how it affects the AI's output. So if you don't have 20 images, don't worry. Of course, ideally you want to have at least 15 to 20 images, but you can start simple, right, and see what happens. Let's start with these three images and train a style Laura. Fantastic. Now let's copy the code. Photo of lifelong friends smiling together. Let's send this one. I have my black and white style reference here. 
I'm hoping to see some black and white shots now. We have some good one here. These two men look same. This too. Maybe this one is a little better. At least people look different. Next tip is while using this personalization, the stylized value determines the strength of your personal code's influence on the generation. Meaning, if you want to see the full potential of your mood board, bump up stylized value to 1000. A monkey in the jungle. All right, look at this. Fantastic. So you will see some geometric patterns because of the original images we used in the mood board. And we have kind of like black and white, but a little bit of like a yellowish looking, the sepia looking. So this comes from increasing the strength of style reference. Next tip I want to give you is it makes sense to use chaos parameter to improve the diversity of results so you can get like much more interesting shots. Let's try something like hope for example, something really abstract, right? And let's have like high chaos value. And by the way, still, if any of the mid journey developers are watching this video, please, can you add, when we add a parameter here, can you please add that a simple tooltip showing the range? Because every parameter have a different range. For example, chaos from zero to hundred, stylized is from zero to thousand. We really need these tooltips here. And I think this is a very simple change, which will bring a lot of value to people. So let's bump up this to 100. And chaos parameter for people who don't know, it creates and it, it brings additional diversity to results. Simply it creates chaos, right? It brings different subjects, different camera angles. And you will realize here bumping up the chaos caused my images to lose a little bit of my style profile. They lost the aesthetical influence. I have it here. And this is due to high chaos. Now let's repeat this with a lower chaos number. Let's say 25 chaos. So I think this brings some interesting results without drifting too much from my original style reference. Chaos is a really strong parameter. I mean, Journey's update goes beyond mood boards, actually. There are other significant personalization features now. We mentioned the multiple profiles that you can manage your personalized profiles from here and each with its own mood board and style settings. And this really allows you to easily switch between styles. So that's really fun. Now they also offer faster ranking. This means you can personalize your AI experience more quickly and efficiently. Previously, when you click on this, users needed to rate 200 pairs of random images to establish a personalized model. But now you only need 40 ratings to start with, of course, optimal stability may change. And then I pick this one and this one and this one, you know, and then you will see that this profile I created already appears here with three rankings that I already ranked. So my closing thoughts, mood boards offer several advantages for AI creation. First of all, of course, consistent style. By using a mood board, uh, you can maintain a consistent visual language across a series of images, creating a cohesive look for your projects. And mood boards can spark new ideas and push your creative boundaries by blending and remixing different visual elements in unexpected ways. Big city life in modern times. And mood boards streamline your creative process by providing a clear visual reference for your AI model, reducing the need for extensive long prompt engineering. From this perspective, I am extremely happy with this new feature, and I think it has a massive potential. Hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you want to learn more about creative intelligence, click here.